Sonia Jacobs, thank you for joining us today on IOHR TV. Now, yours is an incredible story. You and your husband were both on death row, wrongly convicted, and your husband, unfortunately, was executed, and you witnessed this execution. Can you tell me a little bit about the background of the story? Uh, well, we were just very young. I was 27 years old. The children were 10 months old and 9 years old. And uh, we had just taken a lift from a friend. There was no crime being committed. But um, there was a, a police check of cars, and uh, the man panicked at that point, and he shot the policeman. And um, then we were all arrested, and uh, it, it, it suited them to have three convictions rather than one. So even though there was evidence that we were not guilty, they took us all to trial, and on, this, on the uh, testimony of the actual killer, we were uh, both sentenced to death. How did it feel to be on death row? When you were there, did you have any access to seeing your husband? Could you meet? Could you speak? No, no, no. I was in a different prison. I was in the women's prison and he was in the men's prison. Although I had asked if we could share a cell until they figured out they made a mistake. They weren't willing to do that. But um, no, we never were able to see each other again. We wrote letters every day. When they did execute him, we were allowed a, a 10 minute phone call just prior to the execution. And um, that was the end. I was kept in the um, chaplain's office during the execution. And just afterwards, I asked to go to have some privacy, to go into the um, ladies' room. And I looked in the mirror, and there behind me, I could see, I could see him there. And he told me he was okay, and that I, yeah, and so I was okay. But it was a very horrific time. Tell me how the body, the mind and the soul moves on from such an experience. How do you move on with your life? Very gradually. <laughs> At first it's overwhelming. And they didn't know what to do because it was the only time that a couple had both been in prison, except for the Rosenbergs, uh, and that, that one of them was executed while the other was still in prison. So uh, no one really knew what to do. And just gradually I... I, I try to find n normalcy again, and uh, little by little, I was able to I was able to move forward. But um, even even today, when I speak about him, I I sometimes I feel him there, and it makes me happy. Now, the way that you have moved on with your life is an incredible story because you and your husband host those that have been exonerated from crimes, which is an incredible thing to help those people to move on with their life just like you have. Tell me where the starting point is for somebody who's been exonerated and freed from death row. Well, it's a very interesting process because we all have this vision of freedom. And it's, it's almost like... It's almost like a, an animated cartoon because it has no basis in reality. Most of us, when we went to death row, were uh, very young. 
most were younger than I was. I was 27, most were 19, 20 years old. And we think we know about life, but we don't. <laughs> and so all those years you dream of this freedom and that will cure all my problems if I would just be free. But we have no idea what freedom really means because freedom isn't free. Freedom comes with massive responsibilities. For instance, in prison, you get oh, food, three meals of every day, you get a place to sleep, you never have to pay bills. All of a sudden, now I'm free. You have to pay bills, you have nowhere to sleep, you have no food, what will you do? So they release you, sometimes with no money in your pocket whatsoever, and you don't even know where you're going to sleep that night. So unless a person is fortunate enough to have still some family outside, now you're free and it's like a bad joke tell me about the sanctuary that you have in Ireland where you help people to reconnect with themselves with nature and as you said earlier many of them have been confined for long periods and all they've seen is concrete so to have grass beneath their feet to feel the wind in their face tell me the kind of reaction that you get from people it's such a beautiful thing to bring people to the sanctuary in Ireland because we have, there are no buildings around, there's just the, the little house with all the animals and the blue sky and the sea and the wind. And we take them outside and they can walk up the mountain and reconnect with the earth again. And always, the, always one of the animals becomes their companion. Sometimes a dog, sometimes a cat, sometimes a chicken or a goat. And this is so healing, you know, the animals can be very healing. And there's no pollution, there's no crime, there's, there's hardly any electricity. So it's just a very natural environment in which a person can become renewed and feel very safe. That's one of the most important things. And then we share with them the ways that helped us to heal. And one of them, of course, being forgiveness. And of course, because you've been through a similar experience and then you've experienced freedom, you are a perfect person, both you and your husband, to take these people under your wing and to give them the next step to a new life. We will, of course, put all the details of your foundation on our website. Sonia Jacobs, thank you so much for speaking today. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure.